when we look into our course curriculum, like the way we cover is like we start with the data warehousing concepts where we teach the students. It's, it's nothing like, you know, every OBS student you know, must like, he should have a knowledge about the data warehousing, the concepts. So as part of this, uh, we introduce the data warehousing concepts. We talk about the definition. Like there might be certain students who are aware of these things, but there are certain students who are not aware of this uh, concept. So we're just setting the stage so that you know everybody is on the same page. So as part of this, we cover introduction and you know the definition of data warehousing. We talk about all the four characteristic features, and then we move on to the data warehouse architecture. Like you know, what are the components? Like what are the stages? Like what are the sources in a data warehouse process? What are the transformations you use as part of this? And what is the kind of a target? So we talk about all these aspects. And then we talk about the ETL process, how ETL is built as process, uh, you know, how ETL is used in the data warehousing. What is the data extraction? What are the different transformations which we use as part of the ETL? And what are the da different data loading techniques? So briefly, we'll discuss about the ETL, and then we talk about the data warehousing approaches. When we talk about the data warehousing approach, we talk about you know, top-down and bottom-up approaches. Uh, we talk about Kimball's and Inmon approaches, how they are different with each other. And then we talk about the staging area metadata of different uh, you know, areas, like there will be a metadata with respect to, to the source with respect to the staging, with respect to the enterprise data warehouse. So we talk about the metadata in different layers. And then we talk about the repository, which is in the semantic layer, or we talk about the data marts. So there are different kinds of data marts out there. So we'll be talking each of these data marts. And then uh, we talk about the transactional systems, like what are the basic transactional systems, and how these are built and what is the modern techniques which are being used and then we talk about the drawbacks of this OLTP and how uh, like you know we can overcome these drawbacks by introducing the OLAP systems or you know, a data warehouse. So as part of this we will discuss the differences between OLTP and uh, you know, OLAP and then uh, slowly we'll introduce the operational data stores, like how these, uh, the, what is the role of an ODS you know, the, in the architecture, and how different is this from a warehouse. We'll discuss all these aspects. And then we talk about the BI and what are the different BI tools in the market, what is the history of OPI, all this stuff. And as part of uh, the modeling techniques uh, for a data warehouse, we discuss about the star schema design, the confirmed dimension, factless fact table, and other different types of you know, tables which are used in the data warehouse. And yeah, we'll also talk about slowly changing dimensions uh, which are used as part of your ETL. So the idea of this particular session will be that you know, by the end of this particular uh, session, like. You know, so idea of this particular uh, session is that you know by the end of this particular sessions uh, you should be in a you know, position to understand uh, the data warehousing and how is it uh, used in the real time what are the different you know modeling techniques are there like dimension modeling relational modeling and you you know the differences between OLTP and OLAP so overall like you will have a very fair idea about what is data warehousing and what is BI how they are different and once we are done with the data warehousing concepts, we will move to the OBA 11G installation. So 11G installation, like, you know, if it is done, it will be done within, you know, one hour, one, one and a half hours. But if it is not done, like probably if it gets corrupted in somewhere in the installation, then there will be a lot of problems. So this is one of the complex installations uh, which we'll have to go through. So we'll be doing this as part of the course. So we'll start with the installation database, and then once the database is installed, we'll be doing the metadata you know, creation using a RCU. And then we install and configure OBA. We'll test the sample reports, which are part of uh, the OBA. And then we configure these uh, BA sample schemas, like how you 
deploy OBS Apple schema on the OBS server. So, so by the end of this particular session, you guys will uh, know how to install OBS 11G on your workstations and how to configure a BA sample schema and how to deploy this schema on a WebLogic server. So that's about the installation part. And then moving ahead, uh, we will discuss about intro to BI, uh, wherein we talk about a specific definition of BI and what are the different BI tools which are in the market. And like, you know, we talk about different tools. Like there are now in the market, you might have seen Click View, Tableau, and there are so many visualization tools coming into the picture and how they are different with OBA. And we talk about OBA and what is the history of OBA. When you talk about the history, like you know, you might be aware that OBA is not actually the product of Oracle, but it is it has been brought over by the Oracle. So we'll talk about the history just to have an idea of what is uh, like the history of OBA. And then and then you're going to learn about a repository and the reports development. It's just an intro. So when we talk about repository and uh, uh, reports development, like you know, OBA is majorly divided into two parts. Like one is the repository design, the other one is the reports design. So in order to create reports, you need to create a repository. So that's the first most important step. That is to create the report. Sorry, to create the repository. So we'll uh, discuss like you know the course majorly it's like you know divided into two parts one is the repository design and development the other one is the reports de development reports design and development so as part of the reports design and development we'll cover many topics I'll just go through later so in this session we'll just get an introduction about intro to OBA wherein you understand about OBA and then you understand the major categories like report, repository design and the report, reports design and development. And then we'll talk about the architecture of OBA, what are the different uh, components which are involved in this OBA 11G architecture and we talk about how these uh, communicate with each other, how a request is being processed. So all these things will be part of your OBA 11G architecture. So by the end of this particular uh, session, you will be uh, having a fair idea about OBA 11G architecture and the components which are involved in the OBA 11G architecture. So that ends the intro to the OBA and the OBA 11G architecture. And then we'll start our major topic, which is the repository design and development. When we talk about the repository design and development, Again, we talk about the repository basics. So what is a repository? Repository is nothing but it's a, it's a kind of a storage space. So you store some kind of a metadata. Just like you have a database where you store metadata as well as data, over here you just store only the metadata. So it's just a repository of metadata. So as part of this repository design and development, we'll cover the repository basics in which we learn how a request is being processed in an OBA architecture and how do you create a repository. So in order to create this repository, we have something called OBA administration tool. It is a Windows based client through which we are going to create a repository. And we talk about the repository directory and the repository files like there are certain initialization files, log files. We talk about these aspects and then and then we, I will show you how to create a repository. So using an administration tool, how, how are you going to create a repository and how you're going to uh, deploy this particular repository on a WebLogic server. So as part of this repository, you will be learning, you know, when you talk about repository, creating a repository, you talk about how do you import the metadata, right? So the, and the main goal of this repository creation is you are going to store the metadata as part of your repository. To store the metadata, you need to import the metadata. So to import the metadata, first you need to have a connection to your underlying data source. So, so as part of this, you learn how to create a connection pool, how do you import the metadata using this connection pool, and once you import, like how do you open a repository using online and offline. So there are two modes in which you can open the repository. I just show you how a repository looks like. 
So basically, your OBA repository will be part of your program files, and from here you can directly open this. So this is your OBA administration tool, which is a Windows-based tool through which you will be able to open a, a repository, online or offline. But since I'm already having a repository, I'm just opening it just to show you. So this is how a repository looks like through which you import tables. So all these things will be discussed as part of your repository basics like, you know, what are the three different layers when you talk about a repository. Uh, this is a typical repository wherein you have got three layers. Uh, just like, uh, you know, in any other uh, BA tool like Cognos or Business Objects, you have, you know, we have a semantic layer over here wherein uh, the first layer is the physical layer, which is the actual interface between uh, the OBIE and the underlying data source. So using this physical layer, you will be able to import uh, data. You will be first. You will be creating a connection to your uh, underlying data source, and then you will import the database. Sorry, you will import the metadata, which is required. If you see over here, I have imported three tables from my underlying database, which is Oracle. So I have imported these three tables and columns, which are nothing but the metadata. So then we will discuss about the uh, BMM layer, which stands for Business Model and Mapping Layer. So when you talk about physical layer, we, this is nothing but an interface to your underlying data source. Over here, you just import the tables, the physical tables which are required for your reporting. And over here in BMM layer, we talk about a logical model, a business model. So over here, you create your own logical tables so that you know it can be used for a report. So as part of this, you create your business model in which, uh, in this particular layer, mostly you'll be writing the business logic, wherein you might be creating your own uh, derived columns, which will be used in your reporting. So all these things will be done as part of uh, business modeling, uh, business model and mapping layer. So over here, you'll be creating dimension hierarchies, you'll be creating level-based measures. So all these things, like in, 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 in simple words, I can say that, this particular business model will have all the application logic for your reporting layer. So once you're done with this, you will have to create a presentation layer or a presentation model. A presentation model is nothing but this is what the end user is going to see when he starts using, uh, when he starts creating the reports. Now, for example, I'll show you how the end user will be seeing the reports. So if you see here, this is a uh, answers tool through which the end user will be using this tool to create reports. So so if I, if if you see, uh, if I have to create a report, I'll be selecting a particular subject area, and then it will show up these particular, whatever you're seeing over here, these three tables will be reflected in your subject area. So your presentation layer is nothing but it is the actual uh, tables and columns which the end user will be seeing while creating the reports. So whatever changes you do, whatever you want the end user to see, only those things will be seen by the end user. So that will be covered as part of your repository basic layer, wherein you will have an you know, understanding of what is a physical layer, what is a BMM layer, what is a presentation layer, and what are the presentation catalogs. When you talk about the catalog, we talk about the presentation catalogs, like we have, these are the presentation catalogs. And then uh, we will talk about what are the folders and columns. So by the end of this particular repository basic session, you will have a very clear idea about you know the how to create a repository and what is a connection pool, what are the three different layers which are part of your repository. So that ends your uh, you know, repository basic session followed with the building of these layers. Now 
now that you have an idea about what is a repository and how to use an administration tool, now the real work begins. The fun is like, you know, how do you, how are you going to create these models? Now, as part of building the physical layer, you build a physical model as part of your physical layer. So, in your repository, you're going to build a physical model. So this is a physical model wherein you're going to build this, like you're going to create a connection, import the tables, create the joins, create physical joins among these tables. All these things will be discussed as part of your building a physical layer of a repository. So as part of this, you will see how you're going to create a ODBC connection, how do you set up the connection pool properties, how do you import the data sources, verifying the import, whether it is successful or not. And then how do you create physical keys and joins? In case if your underlying data source is not having any keys to find, how do you create those keys in your physical layer? And how do you how are you going to use make use of aliases? So when you talk about aliases, basically in the real time, like when you start uh, you know, when you actually start developing a repository, you will not be using the actual physical tables which you import. Like, you know, these are the actual physical tables what I imported, but I will not be using this. Instead, I create an alias of all these tables and use the alias for my modeling. So there are quite a number of reasons why I do that, which we'll be discussing as part of this session. So by end of this particular session, you will have a fair idea of how to build a physical layer in a repository. So once you're done with the physical layer, then comes a business model and mapping layer. You need to build a logical business model, which is the foundation for your reporting. So how are you going to create that? What are the different objects which are part of your logical business model? So when you talk about the objects, there are quite a number of objects. Now I call this channel as a logical table and we have a logical table source. So every logical table will have one or more physical table sources or another logical table source. So all these are different objects which are part of your uh, logical model which we'll be discussing. And when you see there is a distinction, you know, there is a difference between your this table and this table. What is the difference? Sales is a fact table which is indicated with a hash symbol. And the other tables are the dimension tables. 